I guess. Um, took a little bit of ROM. <laughs> Decided to go ahead and uh, try to put an extended run tank on my Champion 3100 uh, converter generator. And it seems to be working okay. Just got a light load on it, just a little fan. And I've, the only one I've ever seen is a, a guy that sells a kit for a pulse fuel pump tank, um, extended run tank. Well, this one right here is a lot easier to install, and this is not a, a final product by any means, but I just wanted to make sure it would run okay. And by run okay, it was just to really, just to make sure this fuel pump right here would uh, be okay, and you can fill it pump okay, and you can see it's just a fuel, and it runs the generator fine. And it's a low pressure pump from uh, Amazon. And the pump's only about, I don't know, $13, $15, something like that. And the gas tank's about $60 from Walmart. You can get all the hose fittings for you know, less than $50 at Walmart. So, at um, any rate, since I hadn't really seen anything out there other than the one, and it seemed like it was extremely complicated, this one's a lot simpler. So, and uh, just forgive the... Uh, the plastic pieces I have on it because they're going to be exchanged for uh, brass. So um, let me go ahead and just shut it down. Oops. Well, that definitely ain't shutting it down either, is it? Let's try the other one there. There we go. I mean, it's a great little generator, too, by the way. Um, originally got it for that little guy right over there and that thing right up there it's a Dometic uh, 13 5 and we'd got one of those Harbor Freight um, inverter generators and people were saying they were running on that and it wouldn't run it I tried it without the fan I, I turned off every breaker in that thing and tried to just run a compressor without even the the fan running on the air conditioner it still wouldn't turn it up so anyway this one we've got the champion on generator and it does a great job on it we also have a um, just a straight up electric little refrigerator in that thing. And we were able to run about 24 hours on five gallons running the economy at night in 90 degree weather running the air conditioner with this little champion. And like I say, I really can't say enough good stuff about this. This is a great generator. It's quiet. Uh, we have a Honda 8500, but it's a gas guzzling little heathen and it's incredibly loud. And this is a little dog that just likes trampling all over the place. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this thing. Before we disconnect the gas, I'm going to make sure that it's vented up because you don't want gas spraying everywhere. And this right here is just a, the standard connector they sell these days. I'm going to go and just zoom in on it a little bit so maybe you can see a little better. Hopefully. There you go. And you just push this guy right here down to you know pop it off. And it's supposed to be a sprayless. So Obviously, they lie. EPA, they ruin everything. And I just put a fuel filter on here too because I just feel better because it would be going straight to the carburetor because of the way I have it set up. And this is the fuel pump. Like I say, it's from Amazon and it was like $13 or something. And there's the part number on it. You can see it's what HEPO2A. Just do a Google on that and you'll find it. This right here is just a standard um, connector set up for an outboard motor. This here is one I got in my old boat, so I can actually use this tank as a, um, a boat tank and as a generator tank. Of course, be using the boat a lot more than the generator because this thing right here don't hardly use any fuel. My guess is, running six gallons, you can probably um, I don't know, a little over 24 hours on it though. Now the bad thing is, it's not quite like the Honda is. Um, this one right here, you have to have the fuel turned off on it when you're running it. Or else it will fill the tank up and it will over overfill the tank. So just turn the thing off, and um, when you run out in the um, boat tank, you can just switch over to the arm position, and then you you know you have another probably four hours under full load, you know, running the air conditioner. So anyway, let me go ahead and show you how this thing's done. This right here is the standard battery cable that came with it. And all you do is you just cook, you know, red to red and black to black. You don't get a whole lot simpler than that. And let me um, see if I can find my screwdriver. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. And get my glass 
is on too by the way so we're just going to start right over here and you got a screw down here somewhere I'm just going to undo this one these are here just fill up screws right here and I would suggest just go ahead and fast forward and through all this just a few screws you got to do is about seven screws I think total you got one here that one's out you got one over here I'm sorry my camera don't zoom out any further this is pretty much it and you got three over here and one right here right in the middle um, I'm sorry about the zoom. I just like say my camera don't zoom out that far. Oh, let's see if that's any better. There we go. So you got one right there in the middle. And you got one over here on the handle. another one on this side over here I mean you install this thing I mean really it wouldn't take 15 minutes to install it if you have all the parts and you, know, you know what you're doing yeah I was just trying to figure out what I was doing while I was going along let's see let me um I also need a 10 millimeter yeah I'm go grab my socket over here sorry guys should have been a little bit better prepared. Yeah, I guess you probably saw that, huh? My little daughter Suzuki and her little TTR50. She can't reach TTR ground TTR50 yet, but she can reach down little Suzuki. She likes her little dirt bikes. Okay. And we come down here, and there's two 10 millimeters down here. Take those guys right there out. This right here is just an outboard motor fitting right here, you know, that we um, took off earlier. It's disconnected. That's that universal connector they have now. And there's another one down here. Okay, we got those guys right there out. I know we're kind of doing this backward, but it may just be a better way to do it anyway. You know, at least coming from a redneck and then you just kind of pull that like that you see the other little screws pop out from the center those ones up top just kind of stay there and just um just pull it straight out you know don't don't bend it or anything like that okay then you'll come up in here and you'll see this little canister with two hoses on it and all you got to do is just um pull it away from the Away from the cover and it just breaks loose really see right here it's just got um, little slots right here that these little teeth right here go into that's pretty easy and like I said this right here is don't 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 think this is permanent because it's not I was just making sure it's gonna work okay but this right here is a barbed uh, fuel connector 5 16 inch fuel connector and this right here is just a universal outboard motor connector and this guy right here is just a uh, 5 16 uh, T connector. Just got it inserted just to make sure everything's going to work okay. Works great. Um, like I say, you really want to use brass just like that down there is because of the heat that's in here. Because this guy right here, this heat sink tells me this thing gets incredibly hot. And that is it. This hose right here goes up to your, on this side, on the right side, oh well, I'm sorry, well this right here is a single piece line when you're looking in here, and what you'll do is you'll just cut it about an inch and a half down, don't cut it up close near the uh, corner up here, cut it down here because you got to have enough room for that T to slide up in there, and so just put the T in there, get you some 5 sixteenths good fuel line, not this clear plastic crap like I have right here, and what you'll have to do is you'll drill out a little hole down here for your um, for your fitting, and 
just get the outboard motor connector and you just screw that little fitting onto there and tighten it down and it actually tightens up pretty good I mean it's not completely tight but it's uh, it, it won't vibrate or anything it won't affect anything and that's really it and when you put it back together just stick it back together the way it came apart just push it all back up there make sure you slide this guy right here back on and she's good to go remember to run off the boat tank keep this thing right here keep your fuel uh, valve turned off and when she runs out in the boat tank then you can just uh, slide it to on and it'll go ahead and then it'll run off the regular tank make sure you pull off your connector down here too or make you know back fill into the boat tank too but um, anyway guys um, if you have any questions just go ahead and post but it's you know it's pretty simple just that what I saw online was just way too complicated and um, you can do this thing for probably under $125 yourself it's just, it ain't a whole lot to it and it seems to work pretty good as far as I can tell anyway later guys